Hi, this is Amy Chef, and I'm here to show you how I take an image from color to black and white. So I'm in Photoshop and um, I've got this image of my son that I just took actually just a couple days ago. And I chose this image because um, the background um, will, because it's so light and gray, um, it's going to look really great as contrast to his red hair and his darker shirt and his nice um, uh, bright skin right here. And I just love images like this because um, yeah, just these portraits that really capture their little expressions and who they are. So anyway, um, the first thing I do when I uh, start um, editing a picture in black and white is uh, when I do it in Photoshop, um, I'm working on the raw file. I always shoot in raw. Um, but what I do when I specifically know that an image is going to be um, turned into black and white is that when I open up the raw file, it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw and I bypass any edits in there. I don't do any edits in Adobe Camera Raw. I just um, open it up and go straight into Photoshop because I want to see, I want all of my um, edits to be on the JPEG and I want them all to be in the black and white edit. So anyway, let's get down to it. Um, so what I'm looking at here is actually, um, he's exposed pretty well, but I want to uh, bump up his exposure just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring a curves layer. Okay, and I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna pull up just a little bit. Okay, that's getting pretty bright. Um, and then I'm going to bring down, hmm, actually that's pretty good. It's just a tiny, tiny bit. See, that's it. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I do black and whites in quite a few different ways, but for this picture, um, because there's actually not a lot of, um, dimension to this photo because it's just him. Um, I'm going to simply um, just do a gradient map. And I'm going to pull that. Huh. We're going to reverse that. Okay. So here you see this gradient map. Okay. I put it on there and this is pretty gray. Um, it's really flat. That right there, that's not a good black and white. You want your black and whites, um, your whites to be white and your blacks to be black. Like see the whites of his eyes, those are white, that's white. And up here, his hair, that's black. So we're starting with our base as a curves layer and a gradient map. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start building on um, those two layers. So I'm gonna turn off and on my curves. Yeah, I wanna keep that. Uh, yeah, actually that is adding more depth to the picture, more contrast, but he looks way more muddy right there. So I'm going to put that back on. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another curves layer. Okay. And what I'm looking for is to gain contrast between his face and the background. Okay, I want him to stand out in the background to be the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, take this bottom, put a little point there, okay? And I'm gonna pull that down, all right? I'm gonna put a point right there. I'm gonna pull that up, okay? I've got this in very, very slight S curve right here, okay? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. See how white this is turning, okay? It, it's um, losing the gray factor. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off and on. Yep, see that? It's, that was really simple to do, that curves, but that added um, quite a bit to it. Okay, now what I'm seeing is that his hair up here, which is normally, like I'm gonna turn off this gradient map, see, oh, it's like this gorgeous red, um, but it's clipped. And I actually, 
don't really mind clipped blacks um, in a black and white like this, but I kind of want it, his hair is really cool right here. Um, you know, that cool factor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, bring up the curve, get another curves layer, and I'm gonna pull it all the way up, okay? Let's see that? All right, now don't pay attention to his face, all right? What I'm looking at is just up here in his hair. All right, see, I can see more of the little um, hairs and it's just bringing his hair to the, to, to the front. Okay, and so then I'm gonna go back and touch the um, mask and I'm gonna hit Command I to invert the mask. See, and there he's back. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a white brush. Um, and I'm sorry I say um so much, but that's what I do. Okay, so I'm gonna get a, um, a brush and it's white right here, okay? And let's see, opacity. We're gonna lower the opacity to like 50%, okay? Okay, yeah, we're gonna bring his hair back, okay? Because he loves his hair, he thinks it's really cool, I think it's really cool, and I love it when he spikes it up like that, okay? So we're bringing all those little hairs back, okay? Right there. Okay, we'll bring it over here. Okay, and you can just keep turning this off and on. See? Oh, he's so cute. And then you can lower the opacity here if you would like. Um, let's do that. I meant like 95%. Okay, perfect. When you're on this layer and you see other issues, um, let's say that his eyebrows, um, they're looking, his eyebrows are looking pretty good here, but let's just say that you wanted to bring back some of the hairs in his eyebrows. This is the time where you would paint over with that brush, okay? And I'm not um, dodging here. I'm not lightening things up with the dodge tool. I'm actually bringing things back with the curves um, layer. And I like doing it that way much better. And there's his eyebrows. I'm not sure if I want to keep his eyebrows like that. Let's go look. Uh, light eyebrows, dark eyebrows. You know what? I really like his eyebrows. He keeps eyebrows like that. Okay. Um, this is also the time that you can either do it on this layer. If you want to make another curves layer, you could go in and brighten his eyes just a tad. That might be a little too much. Side note, see how I have this eye in focus and this eye is not. Um, that really doesn't matter to me, um, but what you can do to make it seem like this one's more in focus is to bring the, this white light that's in his eyes, the catch lights, to bring it, the other one as white as the other one. We'll see how that works. See? Yep, that works. I'm gonna take that down a little bit though. Yep, okay, I like it. All right, so I'm happy with his hair, I'm happy with his eyebrows and his eyes. Um, the one thing I'm not happy with though is, yeah, I'm um, zooming that out because I want you to see right in here, his face is blending with the background and I actually don't want it to blend. Um, in the article I talked about dimension, you want the subject to stand out. I don't want him to fall into the background. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go grab a, another curves layer. I love curves layers. Okay, and we are actually going to take this, um, this, go down here, put a point right there, bring that down. See what you're adding to it? You're adding some depth there. Okay, we're not gonna leave it like this though because see, I've now clipped the blocks again, right? So we're gonna go back and hit con Command I or Control I, okay? And we're gonna take the white brush, get it to be a good size, and then we're gonna bring the opacity down here because I only want a little bit of uh, dimension there. 
Um, put it down to, to 27 is fine. And if you need to mess with the opacity you and the flow, you can. Like, just go for it. It's better to start out small, um, a lower opacity and a lower flow, and then work your way up. Um, keep adding on because you don't want to take, um, you don't want a harder brush to begin with. So his ears, let's bring back his ears just a little bit. Let's bring back his chin and his shirt. Okay, the sides of his shirt. Let's get this little chin. I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, and his chin is all melted into the background. I'm gonna bring that back. See, and I can just keep going over it. Okay. That's what happens with a, with a low flow, low opacity brush. You can just keep going over it. Instead of, this is what would happen if it was a high opacity. You'd go like this. See that? I can see it. That's just way too much. At one time. Okay, I'm gonna go. Yeah, see that? Bring it back. Okay, there we go. Go back to the opacity. All right. And let's bring back his nose a little bit. He does have a nose. Oh, he's so cute. But all moms think that. Bring out his cheeks. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna look at this for a second. It's really good in the middle of your black and white to actually it's hard to do this because I'm doing a video. Um, to close your eyes for a second and or look away from the screen and just kind of reset your eyes, okay? Because you've been staring at a black and white for so long that you may not see how gray it's turning or how, um, how it's looking. So I'm just like looking away for a moment while I'm talking here. And then I'm going to look at it. Yeah, I actually really like that. Um, I think one thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to make a layers level. No, layers level. A level layer. Um, yeah, tiny bit of contrast. Not on that side. I pulled the middle and I pulled it more towards the darks. And then I'm going to take this um, little arrow that's over here and little slider and I'm going to pull it just a little bit. See how nice and white that's getting? Okay. Your white's white and your black's black. We don't want gray whites. We don't want muddy blacks. See what that just did? Yeah, I couldn't even tell that I, that I was, that the image was a little bit muddy. I couldn't even see that until I put on the levels layer. Yep. Okay. You know what? To me, um, that is a really, I'm really happy with that black and white. I'm going to, um, spot heal that right here. If you don't know how to use a spot healer, there is a tutorial on cloning on the Quicken Moms blog. Just go, um, search in the tutorials. Okay. Perfect. So there you have it. That is a, the way I do my black and whites from start to finish. That, um, of course I did this way slower for the video. Um, I can do it way faster <laughs> if I'm not worrying about what I have to say. Um, so that's it. But before I go, I also wanted to add, um, to show you if you wanted to add a mat layer to it. Um, this is pretty clean and crisp that if you wanted to put, um, a matte layer over top, it's actually really in right now. Another curves layer. Okay. Curves layer is your friend. And then put, um, little points right here and right here. Okay. 
I'm working with a pen, so it's kind of hard to make points with a pen. So then to make a matte layer, you want to pull this bottom pen up. Okay, pull that up. Take this top pin, pull it down, boom. There's your matte layer. Clean and crisp, matty matte. Which one do you prefer? I don't know. Because he's so cute, I like both of them. Okay, anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.